Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a little girl talk because, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people can't go to anyone, so I'm going to try to help as much as I can. I posted a link to a Google form asking for any topics that you guys would like me to talk about, and I actually planned this out. And this is definitely not my second try doing this. I'm just so organized. Anyways, not the point. We're just gonna jump right into this. Okay, first we have mental health. So I have anxiety disorder, OCD, a tick disorder, which if you don't know what a tick disorder is, it is non-vocal Tourette's. And if you don't know what Tourette's is, please do your research. Um, I'm on the spectrum for autism. So I have like, I have ADHD. I have a lot of stuff going on. I've had a rough childhood. Dealing with anxiety was definitely very hard because I always felt like the odd one out. I would see all these other people making friends and I was just sitting there and I would have panic attacks just around like a small group of people. It was definitely really hard to deal with that. And I feel like just knowing that you're not alone in this and there's so many people you can go out to talk to, like parents, therapy, school counselors, like there's so many people, a person on the street, really anyone, someone, you'll find someone that understands and that you feel safe talking to and that will help you with that type of stuff. Because it really is hard, especially when you feel like you're the odd one out. So, you know, and I feel like a lot of people don't, they don't respect mental health, I feel like, because they just assume you're lazy. So people with like anxiety, because teachers have told me I'm lazy because I can't bring myself to do the work because I'm having a really hard time mentally. People with depression, I don't personally have depression, but I know a lot of people with depression, they often get told they're lazy because they can't bring themselves to do something and people just assume they're too lazy to do it. And that's not necessarily the case. It's just they cannot mentally do it. Take that time to yourself to just figure yourself out before you just like mentally shut down because you're not taking that break that you mentally need. Tying in with mental health, comes school and I feel like a lot of people tie school and mental health together for a good reason. School is mentally draining. I'm I'm homeschooled. I've gone to public school for six years and then for middle school I switched to homeschooling but I still go to class once a week. It's really not that complicated. But I was in public school for quite a few years and it was mentally draining having to sit in class for, what, eight hours a day, and then homework that took an hour at least. That's over nine hours of school every single day, and you're expected to do this because the school system sucks. The teachers are there mainly to get paid, not because they care about the education, they just need money. They're like pressing you on an assignment that you didn't turn in because they get raises based off the assignments that you turn in and they get in trouble if you don't turn it in. This has so many points um, off here. We have dress codes. That is messed up. It is sexualized. It is It's definitely pointed more towards girls than it is guys and that is completely messed up. Schools are thinking very I don't know, perverty, you could say. They're thinking, oh wow, their shoulders are showing. Oh wow, their legs are showing. This is showing, this is showing. Boys can't, boys can't control themselves. How dare a girl distract a boy because she has her own body out. Oh no, shoulders? Why? Because boys can't keep it in their pants? Maybe they should learn how to control themselves so we can choose what we want to wear. Why can't we wear skirts, or shorts, or jeans, or leggings, or shirts without being sexualized? It's- and what? Guys have to- oh, no spaghetti straps, no coming up shirtless. That's all I hear from them. My school? Guys do have dress codes. It's like the basic stuff, like no excessive gothic, no inappropriate stuff on your shirts. And then we come back from break and they're like, Okay, I'm just gonna refresh you. 
girls, you know, wearing too short of shorts, leggings without everything being covered, and they just have a list for girls. And it's like, dude, what about the guys? I've seen guys wear short, short, short shorts that are tight. Why don't they get in trouble? Like, that just makes no sense. And we can't really do anything about it because we are young children being taught that wearing this distracts boys. We have to learn to not distract boys because we're the problem and they're not. It's messed up. I hate it so much. I <clears throat> This would be a very long video if I could keep going on about this, but I'm going to move on. Fake grades. I have kind of relaxed parents with grades. If they notice my grades are dropping, that's when they kind of get on me, onto me like, dude, you got a 70 overall what is going on don't stress out about it because stressing out about it is really going to make you do worse grades is just a number don't call yourself stupid if you got a bad or a worse grade than you thought you would or than you were hoping because it's really just a number it doesn't define who you are it doesn't make you stupid or smart just because you did better on a test than someone now if that doesn't mean you can't feel good about a test or like a grade that you got but you know don't make other people feel bad for what they got friends i'm not a very good person to talk about this um because i have just a few friends like i said with my anxiety i have really bad social anxiety which is not just that oh no people it's like i break out in hives so i don't really have that many friends i never really have i only become friends if they talk to me first um last time i was trusted talking to someone i because my sister was friends with them the previous year. She sat down next to me and I said, so, I heard you like pickles. I would do anything to erase that. At least from my memory. Anyways, we became friends, so... Worked in the end. Friends, how to keep them and not having guy friends. So I personally think that having guy friends is awesome. Just don't sexualize things. Respect boundaries. I feel like being like, oh, I'm a girl, so I can only be friends with girls because, you know, boys are gross. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of messed up in my brain. Okay, now, how to keep friends. I have had friends that are so dramatic. They make drama for no reason. This one girl was like, dude, I don't want you guys fighting over me. No one's fighting over you. You're just making people get mad at you so they get mad at each other. Like, no one cares about you that much, to be honest. And don't be dramatic. If they're gonna leave you out, leave them. They're not worth it. If they're gonna spread lies about you, leave them. Don't get involved in drama. And I know everyone says this, don't. Avoid it. Uh, drop everyone that is drama. I personally, to avoid drama, I stay by myself. I don't tell anyone anything. I don't talk to people. That way they can't spread things about me. And if they do spread things about me, which has never happened, they're all lies because I don't even talk to anyone crushes you are young do not date if you're not past middle school i personally think middle school okay elementary what are you doing you're not past 10 that that's not gonna last that's not true love get out of that relationship you're little kids okay got that promise pinky promise you're a little kid don't don't focus on relationships you have so many years ahead of ahead of you. Middle school relationships, they are the worst things to witness. And I don't even witness them, I hear about them. Because my sister goes to a public school. <sighs> you guys break up in like a week. And then get with another dude. Or girl, or whatever. Stay out of them. You guys are pathetic. You have so many years ahead of you. Use these years in school to learn and not focus about boys. Tips for school. Don't let people get to you. There you go. Coping with anxiety. As I said, I have really bad anxiety. And I have not tried to find a coping mechanism until recently. As in like the past two years. Which is really bad. Because I have had anxiety for my whole life. Like the second I popped out of that womb. We're going to start off with some good habits that I have liked I guess. So, number one, I, I literally do this like in every single video. I love journaling. 
I journal, I have journaled every single day for like a week, but we don't talk about that. I have my two journals, one of them's warped because I put them too close to a lamp, don't do that. I have a prompt journal. This is my child. If anyone like were to ever read this, I'd be mentally stable. I have filled up that much, like recently. Journaling has helped me because it's just like a brain dump. It. I personally like to do it just because one, it gets your mind off of things. So like this happened today. Um, I cried because of this. And then you read back on it and you don't have to read back on it. It's like, I'll just flip through and it's like, wow, this, this was going on. I just record my day, record how like my mental health is, record my struggles. And then I'll read back and I'm like, oh, wow, I could do this differently next time. And that has really helped me. And then finding things that you really enjoy. Like I love skating so much. I don't do like tricks or whatever. I just ride around. Sometimes I go skate to get boba or go to the park or go to the library. Like I listen to music, I listen to a podcast. I have two podcasts that I love, Ladies and Tangents. They are so entertaining and they just like get my mind off of anything that's going on. And she, uh, which is shifting her experience. They're awesome. I love them. I listen to both of them so much and that just helps me get my mind off of things. Um, I went to therapy and I hated it and I'm actually thinking about going back to therapy but I just don't want my parents finding out like what I'm talking about. Not because it's like oh secretive but like I just don't want them to know. Like otherwise I'd go to them. You know what I mean? Bad habits. Okay this is um, a little trigger warning for self-harm. Um, so I'll give you a little timestamp for when this section is over. I have struggled with self-harm for quite a while and I didn't even know it was self-harm when I started till I told my sister. Don't even know how that happened. That was dumb though. And then she told my parents and then that's, that's how I went to therapy. My mom put me in therapy and then mentioned that and I was like, hold up, how do you know? Anyways, my sister basically ratted me out. Thank you, Brianna, because um, I didn't know that. I didn't know I was doing anything wrong. Anyways, I'm like three months clean now. It's not gonna help anything. When you think of self-harm, I feel like people think of cutting themselves or razor blades or scissors or blood or whatever. But self-harm is intentionally hurting yourself. So that's like breaking bones. Some people break their own bones to hurt themselves. I wouldn't cut myself. I would punch myself. I would bruise myself. I would, you know, intentionally hurt myself because that got like the mental pain out. I actually heard this in Shameless. Uh, one dude was talking about, I don't even know where it came from, but he said mental pain you cannot feel. So you turn it into physical pain, which is something you can actually feel and that hurts. Which I was like, wow, that's actually like, maybe that's just common sense, but like, wow, you learn something new every day. Then it was also how to like cope with like, I guess, urges. Within those three months, I've had so many urges because I am so far from mentally stable. And things happen. There's so many ways that I have stopped myself, which I once got a tissue and ripped it up to like, no, aggressively ripping it, which actually helps. Taking a second to breathe and like process what you're about to do. Or um, I like to journal when I'm having an urge just to like get that out of my brain. Since I was not, I didn't cut myself, I would like sit on my hands so I couldn't move them. Basically just try to do anything to get your mind off of it, which could be sitting on your hands, talking to someone, talking to someone is probably like number one. Crying, crying it out, that's pretty fun. Ripping something out, basically being aggressive to a non-living thing, you know, like take them and Okay, here's just like random things that don't tie into each other at all. Hey, periods. I feel like this is really girl talk. Okay, I had mine for... I miss catching my nerves. Man, I started January 2nd, 2021 and I, I had a little party January 2nd, 2022 and I completely forgot this year. Anyways, I've had mine for two years now. Crazy, huh? For anyone who hasn't had their period yet, don't be scared, okay? Don't hope for it either, though. It's really not that exciting. Okay, you bleed for a week, a month, once a month. Ooh, so exciting. Someone asked for an emergency kit. 
Um, I have an emergency. Um, I have an emergency kit in my backpack. It's just a pencil case like this big that has pads, panty liners, tampons. I'm actually terrified of tampons. I've always used pads. So like main essentials, pads, panty liners, or tampons. You know, like basic stuff. An, an extra pair of underwear is probably good to keep. Some maybe like pain relievers if you have cramps. I have deodorant, a lint roller, tissues, makeup wipes, and lotion, just in case. And then I just put that in a pencil pouch and you're all good to go. If you start your period in school, do not panic, okay? And you don't have a pad, make a makeshift one. Um, I've never had to do this, so I don't know how well this works. But you take toilet paper, okay? Here's your underwear, you take toilet paper, boom, 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 just start wrapping it. Actually, I don't know if you wrap it like that, or you just like fold it. Either way, but go to like the nurse's office, or the office, or a teacher, they will have something for you, or they'll let you call your parents to get something for you. So don't worry. What to expect? Some people, a lot of the times you won't know that you're about to start when it's your first period, but I have a period tracker, which is not very accurate because it's not con your period's not gonna be consistent for like the first two years because you know your body's deciding hey we're gonna bleed now we have no schedule something that could like if you're not sexually active something that could be delaying it like if you've already started it one you just started and it's gonna take a while um, for it to be consistent to stress medicine and that's all I know of actually or pregnancy okay so Something else to expect would be like brown discharge is in the beginning or the end. It's normal, you're fine. Cause most of the time it's like just blood in the beginning and at the end it's just like dry blood. It's really not that bad. Oh, and then here's another thing. I, I like I said, I don't like using tampons. I never have, I don't want one near me. I've always been a pad girly felt so guilty just like throwing away pads of cotton and I was like that's like that's not good for the environment so I switched to period underwear but they're awesome they're so comfortable too someone said thoughts on spray tans I don't know I think they're weird honestly but like if if you feel comfortable go you okay first kiss <laughs> um um I've never dated I've never had my first kiss I don't plan on having one soon my best friend is dating, how do I support her? Um, don't like bring her down for it. Don't try to break them up. That's something else. Like don't try to break them up. Don't try to find dirt on them to make her mad at him or mad at them or whatever. You know, just be positive about it. If they ditch you for whoever they're dating, drop them. If they're gonna pick someone else over you and they can't share equally, if they're not, if they're gonna prioritize one person more than the other, drop them. Okay, body shaming, and I also tied this one in, bloating. Body shaming sucks. And a lot of people think that skinny shaming is very different than fat shaming, which I think it is, but it's not okay either way. They're definitely not the same thing because people tell bigger people, oh, you're so fat, um, and skinny people, oh, you're so small. So it's definitely not the same thing, but it still hurts the same. But don't listen to them because it's your body. It's your home. Why why shame it? Like why let other people have a choice on what you do? It just it's not gonna get you anywhere listening to other people's opinions on your own body. Like do what you want with your body. Okay, and bloating. Food is fuel. Eat whatever you want to. Don't listen to other people say, Oh, you're really eating again? Or like I can't <laughs> Dude, I get to, oh, you're eating again? Or, oh, wow, you actually finished? Just, like, make up your mind. You want me to eat or not? Like, don't let them tell you what you can or can't eat because of your weight. Here's the last one. What to do if you love your boyfriend but are too scared to commit. Okay, I've never dated. Um, I've never gotten, like, something serious like that. Definitely be open to them. Express how you're feeling. Definitely be on the same page. Communication is all I have to say. Communicate with whoever you're with like you have to communicate how you're feeling and let them communicate how they're feeling 
and then that way you have like a balance in that. I'm gonna like rant and rant and rant if I don't stop this now. It's been 30 minutes. I hope this helped. I'm your big sister now. I hope this was somewhat helpful and you know, you feel comfortable being here. Welcome. If you ever need someone to talk to or to like vent or whatever, here's my Pinterest. Messages are open. I'm always here. I will always, you know, be supportive either way. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> this is gonna be a pink edit again. But this time it was actually planned out, so I hope it's a less of the pain like my last one was. Thank you guys for like helping me with the video ideas. Love you guys.